Good afternoon guys, this is Marcus aka Scruffy Pillows from Team Divine Pro. Now this is going to be a Genesis deck profile and for those of you who have followed me on my YouTube channel for Scruffy Pillows, you're thinking, dude, you've already done a Genesis deck profile, what's up? Well, the thing is, is that this one's, oh my god, this one's in Japanese. Yeah, so, woo, Japanese. Anyway, before I get started, I want to say thanks to Cardotaku for sending me this deck. Dude, it's amazing. It's a blast, even without Minerva, which, that's no fault of your own. It's freaking expensive, but, I mean, I do plan on doing the Regalia Legion, and, yeah, so, because I think it's going to be boss mode. So, yeah, Genesis, woo! So for our starter, we have Battle Maiden Amenoho Akari. That is a mouthful and a half for a name. Do not try and say it fast. You will look stupid in front of people. Unless you're Japanese. Then you can say it fluently. Curse you Japanese people. Nah, I kid, I kid. I love you Japanese people. Anyway, she is the forerunner for the deck. So you ride over her and call her to rear guard. Now, her second ability is what makes her awesome. Whenever you boost a grade 3 unit, uh, you can soul charge the card off the top of your deck. Now, a lot of people are thinking, well, soul charging is what Genesis does best. Well, you are absolutely right. But, what makes this awesome is that it soul charges grade 3s. Now, a lot of soul charging early is okay. It's not great. Grade 3 is really when you want to soul charge. Because that's when the soul charge... Uh, magic happens, you know, for, for Soul Blast and everything else, so she's really good. Best starter, in my opinion. Now, for Grade 3s, we have my Minerva replacement, which is Battle Maiden Mizuha. She limit breaks 4, and you Soul Blast 3, so there's that magic number again. And then you gain plus 5,000 and plus 1 critical, which makes her pretty good, but that's 1500. No one wants to see a 1500 Vanguard. They want to see 1600 or, uh, sorry, 16,000. My bad. 16,000. No one wants to see a 1600 Vanguard either. But, uh, anyway, so she does that, but she makes up for that, especially in today's meta, you want to hit higher numbers. So they gave her an additional 3000 power if she attacks the Vanguard. So, that makes up for it, at least it, somewhat, in my opinion. Then you have four Regalia of Wisdom Angelica. She is the break ride for the deck. Now, she break rides and... No, she doesn't break ride. She break rides, but whatever. Anyways... Uh, you Soul Blast 3, and you get to discard one card and draw two cards, or vice versa. Whichever one you want to do, I think it's draw two first and then drop one. But anyway, your Vanguard gains 10,000. Yeah, 10,000 power! Now, whenever she attacks by herself, she gets to Soul Charge 1, so Grade 3 Soul Charge again. And you get to give her plus 1,000 power. So 12k attack on her own and grade 3 soul charge, which makes it good. So, I think a lot of people are probably going to use her and then break ride and then legion and all sorts of other stuff. So, it's going to be scary. For grade 2s, I have 4 Goddess of Trees Jupiter. Now, she is the 12k attacker for Regalia. And, yeah, that's about all she wrote. 12k attacker for Regalia. Then you have 3 Witch of Grapes Grappa Lur. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, she... Soul charges, or uh, she soul blasts. Whenever she gets soul blasted, um, you soul charge two cards from the top of your deck. So you don't soul blast until grade three. So again, it's grade three soul charge. And I'm going to move these down. Then you have two Battle Maiden, Sahohime. This is the card that makes your opponent say, No, I am guarding. Quintet Wall, or whatever. Overguard. Whatever they have to do. 
to prevent her from hitting her ability because you counter blast one and soul charge three. Now, obviously, this is a double edged sword because you get to soul charge three, but you have no idea what you're going to be soul charging. And with this deck, that's kind of scary, but not really because the deck is pretty much play through no matter what you soul charge. Unless you soul charge like three heals, then it's like GG, bro. But it wasn't GG, it was BG. Then we have two Witch of Ravens Chamomile. Now, again, in my other Genesis deck profile, I mentioned that they are the unsung hero, her and Melissa. Why? Because when you Soul Blast her, you can Counter Blast one and Superior call her back to the field. Now, they, that may not seem like a lot, but with Minerva, it can be. Because with Minerva's Restand ability, Drive Checking again, you can apply triggers to her and apply pressure to your opponent. It makes it scary. So, And obviously an additional attack is never a bad thing. Then for grade ones, I have four Witch of Oranges Valencia, which is the same as Grappa. You Soul Blast her and you Soul Charge two cards from the top of your deck. You know, self-explanatory. What deck would be complete without four perfect guards? Again, I have to move these down. I'm doing a different setup today, so I'm sorry if cards kind of fly off camera. Anyway, uh, a lot of people are like, well, why don't you use Quintet Wall? Well, Quintet Walls are okay. They're not great in my opinion, because all your opponent has to do is hit over the guard. So, it's just like with Soul Charging. You're, you're risking. You check the top X number of cards of your deck and let's say you get three grade threes, a grade one, and a grade two. That's a 10k shield. You could have done the exact same thing by dropping a trigger from your hand. One card. So you kept a counter blast, you kept a card in your hand, or like whatever, and you also kept four cards from the top of your deck, or five in this case, since you're guarding from your hand. I mean, quintet walls are fun, don't get me wrong. Uh, and I know the, the cider combo, but it's, eh, I, I'm not too hot on it. I like perfect guards way more. But that's just my opinion. I then run three of the Regalia 10k attackers, uh, Goddess of Union Juno, because Juno, she is awesome. Juno. <laughs> uh, then for the real unsung hero of Genesis we have three Ordain Owl now his ability is boss mode especially with the Legion that is about to come out if it is in fact Regalia uh, its ability is that you can take a grade 3 unit from your drop zone that has Regalia in its name send it back to the bottom of the deck and give one of your Regalia units on your side of the field either Vanguard or Rear Guard and give it plus 5,000. That's dangerous. I don't like it. I don't like facing up against people that use Regalia, especially Minerva. And I think this guy is going to make the Regalia Legion even more broken. Uh, I don't even know what the Regalia Legion does. So it could be st stupid and you don't even run it. But I doubt it. They usually do a pretty good job with Genesis and Regalia stuff. So winding down the deck, we have four Battle Maiden Kakurahime. She is the Soul Charger uh, critical trigger. You drop her on the field, Soul Charge her mid game, whatever, and give one of your units plus 3,000 power. So kind of that little edgy Soul Charge whenever you need it. We have. For Cyber Tiger, four of the cutest critical trigger in my opinion, next to Kakurahime. Shh, you didn't hear this. Uh, which of Lemon's Lemoncino? Now, yeah, because I mean, look at her. She's cute. And going on with the cuteness, we have four Large Pot Witch Laurier. This is the heal trigger. So 12 crits for 12 times the pressure. Your opponent's going to be screaming, No! Don't attack me! But yeah. 
anyway, so that is the deck profile for the Genesis stuff. Now, like I said, Cardo Taku does his own version, especially with Minerva. He explains a lot of the stuff that I did, and probably a lot better. So, if you want to, definitely go check him down below. Uh, also, check out our Team Divine Pro Facebook page. You can go on there, like it. If you guys want to, you can comment on this. You can like it, subscribe, do whatever. Uh, what do you guys think about Legion? What do you think about the new extra boosters for uh, Shadow Paladins and for uh, Genesis? You know, some of the cards from the Shadow Paladin booster were uh, released last night as far as the episode. So, go check that out if you haven't. Shadow Paladins are getting pretty scary again. You know, they were for a good while because of Phantom Blaster Dragon and his ability to, like, go really big. But now it just got wicked scary. I don't like what's going on with it. <laughs> Mainly because I don't want to fix it. But, I mean, just go check it out. It's a really cool episode. It's really fun. Uh... You know, like I said, like, comment, subscribe, check out Cardo Taku, check out our Facebook page, which will be somewhere, either down below or here or wherever. But yeah, you guys, uh, thanks for stopping by and checking out the video. I really appreciate it. You know, it lets us know that you enjoy what we do and it really drives us to make more videos. So this is Marcus from Team Divine Pro saying I will catch you guys on the flip side.